everyone, and welcome to New Matter, the SLAS podcast where we interview life science luminaries. Today, we'll be continuing our series focusing on the lab of the future. Joining us today is Micah Bross, an assay development scientist at Pivot Park Screening Center, who is here to discuss with us the application of mass spectrometry in high throughput screening. Welcome to the podcast, Micah. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So to start off with, Micah, could you just kind of provide us with a little bit of your professional background? Yeah, so I um, I have been working in the pharmaceutical industry about over 15 years now. I started my career at a Dutch pharmaceutical company called Organon at a department specialized in assay development and HTS. And it's also my first acquaintance with lab automation. And 10 years ago, I joined the Piff Park Screening Center as an asset development scientist. And at PPSC, we uh, provide drug discovery services in, uh, in all the fields of asset development, lab automation, uh, ultra high throughput screening, and uh, it's elite profiling. And this is also where I first uh, got acquainted with uh, mass spectrometry and uh, the automation of that. Since we acquired like three years ago the Rapiflex from uh, Brookaker, and uh, in combination with a, a spotter a instrument, we are now able to run fully automated MS assays. So the last couple of years, I had the privilege to work, uh, yeah, with the with this equipment and in several MS projects uh, from uh, well screening to uh, ASMS uh, assay development. That's great. So you're actually relatively new to using mass spectrometry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. was, it, was it a little intimidating at first? I don't know. I personally am very intimidated by mass spectrometry. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> I found it really overwhelming, the first steps and all the information that's coming your way. And there's so many possibilities and things to do that. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So can you just give us maybe a little bit of information then on, you know, how can mass spectrometry be used for high throughput screening? Yeah, so I think the key in this is automation and right equipment. So to increase the amount of samples you're able to process within one day, to able to process high number of samples in a relatively short time and also measure them with good resolution and sensitivity is really key to making this high throughput and uh, making it available for screening. For example, for now in our HCS system, we are now able to run like up to 80, 15, 36 well plates uh, per day. So that's like 120,000 data points. So these are really advancements that are going really rapidly in the field at this moment. Wow. So were you... Before you guys got all of this mass spectrometry equipment, were you running like similar assays, but using different methods? Yeah, so we mainly specialize just in biochemical assays using uh, fluoresces fluorescent labels, specific detection reagents, cellular assays with also, uh, yeah, fluorescent or luminescent readouts, just the uh, standard <laughs> uh, HTS assays. Yes. Cool. How would you say then, you know, you focus a lot, I understand, on affinity-based assays, that's correct? No, yeah, mostly screening and affinity-based assays, something that we have been setting up in our lab in the last couple of months. So that's also relatively new. Our main oh. focus is primarily the the, the screening uh, part, yeah. Are you guys moving over into the affinity-based assays because of this introduction of mass spectrometry to your labs? Yeah, and it's just, just also a demand from the field that, this is something that's emerging and there's interest to uh, replace other target binding uh, assays. So that's why we started introducing the ASMS in our lab. Yeah. So how can then mass spectrometry be used for these affinity-based assays? Yeah, ASMS, of course, makes uh, use of the binding interaction between your lig ligand and your target of interest and uh, your ability to isolate your target binding compounds from the mixtures of the small molecules and your target. And then using MS with high selectivity sensitivity to measure those molecules. And there are different methods described, mostly differ in the way how you isolate your ligand like, target complexes from your uh, non-binding compounds. And the one that we implemented in our lab uses a sec resin, so size exclusion, a step to uh, to isolate your uh, the ligand bound 
to your target and then measure them using our model of uh, MS. And we are now able to do that with approximately 5,000 compounds per day. Wow. So that's relatively high throughput. And we're looking into the possibility also to start upscaling that by pooling uh, compounds to test more compounds per well, generate more data. So you can test multiple compounds per well? That's the next step in this process. So we are, have now set up the, the assay in our lab. There have been some, some minor steps made, but this is the next step to really uh, scale up the assay and also really make the ASMS applicable for real high throughput screening. So really processing like hundreds of thousands of compounds in an acceptable time. What advantages does mass spec have for affinity-based assays compared to other affinity-based assay methods? Yeah, so of course there's the label-free advantages. So there are no radio labels, no fluorophores or chromophores. It also does not really require specific uh, knowledge of your or target or development of target-specific assay conditions. Just minor buffer adjustment might be enough to, to screen a completely different target. There's also no heating or unfolding of your protein involved, so you can really measure it intact. And above all is that we are now able to run it in a high throughput setting. So that's, I think, the main advantage compared to the normal SPR or uh, TSA methods that are relatively low throughput. And um, yeah. Is this similar to the advantages that you see using mass spec compared to the other screening methods that you had been using previously? Yeah, I think that's that's similar. So the main advantage, of course, of the mass spectrometry is that you can measure molecules without labels or detection reagent that can interfere with your uh, molecule of interest. So you have about the same high level of throughput, would you say, compared to other methods using mass spec? It, it, it's a little bit slower than, than with the biochemical assay because the processing times of your sample are a bit lower. But if you have a look at the data that you're getting out of it, you will need less uh, follow-up on your compounds of interest. So it takes a little bit more time to screen your full library, especially for the biochemical assays. With the ASMS, we're now looking into compound pooling. So this might really significantly increase your throughput. But for the standard uh, high throughput screening, it's a little bit slower. but the data that is coming out of it should result in better hits, less follow-up essays needed. That's nice. Are there any advancements that are currently being made in mass spectrometry that will make the technique more compatible with um, high throughput and automated processes in the lab in the future? Yeah, so developments are moving really fast in the in the last couple of years. So there are, of course, a lot of automation equipment that is on the market, but there's also... Uh, now uh, developments in acoustic injection, uh, so echo MS, where uh, samples are transferred into the uh, mass spectrometer using uh, droplet injection. Uh, there's also a lot of development in the LCMS field where uh, faster sample handling is really have taken a flight in the last couple of years. And also uh, better uh, resolution separation of molecules, for example, the dim stuff equipment from Procore is really uh, setting to gain a higher uh, sensitivity and able to detect molecules at a lower uh, concentration. So there are different angles that are all working on getting better data, faster data, processing more samples. Yeah, and of course, next to that, there's a software development. So also analyzing data, there's also steps to be made there, I think. Yeah, are there being more moves made to kind of integrate mass spec equipment into the general workflow of the labs? You know, like we've kind of seen liquid handlers are really being integrated into the lab space more. Are you seeing that happening with mass spectrometry equipment? Yeah, there are more and more articles also popping up with mass spec used in uh, high throughput screening. So there's definitely something that is uh, evolving. Yeah. How are deep learning and other data mining and analysis methods improving our ability to use mass spectrometry? Yeah, so I'm not really uh, into <laughs> into the deep mining, but I can imagine that that the more these techniques are used and the more knowledge there becomes available, that also the development of certain algorithms to process your data more easily or uh, with less knowledge of beforehand on the molecules that you are looking at, that it will 
of course, take a flight. Yeah. Do you think that as mass spectrometry technologies improve, it's going to start replacing other high throughput assay methods in the lab? I mean, obviously, it's already starting to happen for you guys. Do you see this becoming a more, more widespread trend? Yeah, I think it's this is really what you see. Uh, and also the demand that we are getting from our customers is really for what can you do with the MS-based uh, assays? What are you able to process? It just has to become a little bit more known, broader, I think. So a lot is already possible with all the advancements that are being made at the moment, and it will only become more applicable for automation and HTS. I don't think it will replace everything since there will always be uh, molecules that you just can't measure or are unstable in the in the whole process. But it's definitely something that I think is, yeah, is starting to at least be integrated in more places and is here to stay, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So in your experiences in the lab, you know, now that you've kind of transitioned into using a lot of these mass spec technologies, are there any instances where you kind of have to go back to the previous assays or screening methods you were using before mass spec or has mass spec kind of replaced everything in your lab space? No, it's definitely not a replaced everything. There's still some assays that we just not able to get to work. So there's still also from the customer's point, there are still a uh, a lot of questions just for normal biochemical assays. So it definitely hasn't replaced everything, but we are getting more and more requests for uh, mass spectrometry and especially the ASMS is really getting interest now that we are also going out with this. That's interesting. Do you ever have any customers that come to you and say that they don't want mass spectrometry to be used? <laughs> <laughs> no, but... It's not something that gets discussed with every customer. So a customer most of the time has their own idea or an already, an, already an essay that's running. So MS is mostly something that is popping up when uh, essay has to be developed from scratch or it, as an orthogonal essay, um, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So there hasn't been a whole lot of resistance in moving over to the mass spec, do you think? No, no, not a resistance, but I think, uh, as I already said, it needs to get more known. And there's also, we have now implemented, I think, one of the first heroes with a with a large mass spec capability. And also at the customer side, if there's not a primary assay developed with a mass spec, it's most of the time not something that they come to us with for a primary screening. Mm. It is something that we offer and there is more and more request for that. That's interesting. So do you think that as people develop more techniques for using this technology, it's going to become requested more often and, and increase yeah. in popularity? Yeah, I think that's that's just the point where we are now, that it has to become more broader, knowledgeable, and also that people have to be able to set it up at their own labs to really transfer it to a business as ours, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What are the barriers that are might be preventing some people from setting this up in their own lab spaces? I think the investment for our mass spectrometers is still relatively high. It's not a uh, something that you can buy for uh, for a couple thousand of euros and uh, or dollars, <laughs> and it still needs a specific knowledge of how to set up your essays. We are also still learning, and um, yeah, I think a good basis to to have people to where you can gain knowledge so we have also several collaborations with other parties where we uh, try to increase our knowledge on what we can do with the equipment and also what are new fields to explore do you see in the future this becoming a more you know accessible technique or piece of equipment? Do you see the costs coming down? Do you see more people getting trained on it? Or do you think that it's still for a while yet going to be a little bit more specialized? Yeah. Yeah. I think the the, the developments that are currently going on are making the equipment easier to use. Uh, so it make it easier to use. And that's also making more people having access to it. But I think it's, uh, I'm not sure how it, how it costs wise for the equipment that is now getting to market out it is relating to that. What are some assays that we can do with mass spec now that we wouldn't have necessarily been able to do five or 10 years ago? 
Yeah, I think it comes back to the same, well, to the same uh, automation of the MS essays has really taken a flight the last couple of years. So now being able to do standard biochemical essays in 1536 well is really something that we wouldn't be able to do a couple of years ago. Um, there's been such a significant improvement in sample processing, sensitivity, resolution, and also the, the development that makes sample cleanup are necessary. So just with minor buffer adjustments, you can make it MS compatible. Just something that's really making a difference with a couple of years ago, I think. Was there anything, you know, when you first started using mass spec a couple of years ago, were you surprised by anything? Was there anything in there that you didn't think mass spec could do or that you had learned about mass spec previously that has since changed? I think there are so many possibilities and, and starting, uh, we started just with the simple biochemical essays, how to set that up. And I think that's something that was relatively simple to grasp, not really new, but now the last couple of years, we gaining more fields and also the ASMS, which is something really that I thought, okay, we're now able to use it for binding essays. We're also exploring uh, the possibility to look at cellular essays. There are really things that are now, yeah, once you get to work with the equipment and get more more known with the whole principle of mass spectrometry and you start reading about it, you get surprised and I think almost anything is possible what we would normally run on an HTS system is now possible to, in some extent, progress to a mass spec. Wow. Are there any assays or types of assays that we can't currently do with mass spec that you think we will be able to use mass spectrometry for in the next five or 10 years? I don't know if there's anything that we really can do at the moment, but I think there are significant improvements made uh, for cellular target-based assays. So to really uh, perform cellular screens with uh, mass spec and also in LCMS, there are major improvements made already in the last couple of years, but are still growing to really improve uh, sample throughput. So I think it's mainly targeted at sample throughput, different uh, MS technologies making improvements and the cellular assays. For any individuals out there who are working in assay development and high throughput screening, but may not have much familiarity with mass spectrometry, do you think it's important for researchers to start familiarizing themselves with these techniques now so that they don't get left behind as mass spectrometries improve and become more common? With all the developments that currently are going on in the field, the applications for MS in the in high throughput screening will, will only grow when taken into account that advantages that are related to the MS readout. So with the label free and the other advantage I already mentioned, it's probably be something that will be represented in the screening lab in the future, definitely, in, in any way or form. It will definitely be incorporated. Do you see this as something that is going to be more common for younger generations of scientists to be trained on, whereas maybe it wasn't as common in the past? Yes, I think definitely think so. So especially in the lab, of, in the field of the asset development and high throughput screening, it there will be more people trained and it will be something that you will have to gain some knowledge about if you want to participate in the field, I think. Well, you know, we're almost running to the end of our time, but I just wanted to ask, Maggie, before we close out, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to talk about with mass spec and its role in the lab of the future that you would like to add to this discussion? I can't, <laughs> I can't think of anything right now. I think the, the, we covered uh, most of the of the things I think I'm really I'm just excited that we can we were able to share this with you and uh, we are really excited about the technique uh, in our lab and the things um, the the things that we can do with it and um, the new fields that we are exploring uh, with as ASMS and the cellular assays that uh, yeah it's just something that uh, people have to keep an eye out for. Uh, Definitely. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you and learning more about the new uses for mass spectrometry. And we really hope to see you and others at the Pivot Park Screening Center at some of our future SLAS events. Thanks. Thanks.